Hi everyone, this is Miss Mariah from the Allen County Public Library, and this is Art Education. It's a program that we do once a month, usually on the second to the last Tuesday. And all it does is it gives you some information about um, a style of art, technique, an artist, pretty much anything art related. Cause you know, we've done folk art, the first year we did this, this is actually the second year. The first year we did it, we um, sketched and we, we concentrated on the features of the face. The second year we did it, which is this year, unfortunately, um, COVID-19 hit. But the first couple of programs, we actually did a Van Gogh painting. Um, we just studied the technique and, and how Van Gogh did the sunflowers. And we did our own sunflowers, just our, you know, recreation or our, or our just our own sunflowers. And then we did, hmm, it was Monet. Woo, Monet. Mm -mm. He can, he can have his art. He, I love looking at Monet's because you get real close and it, you can't even really tell what it is. But then as you back up, you're like, oh my gosh, that's water lilies or that's flowers or, you know, that's people. So his technique is very interesting, but very difficult for someone who is not trained or just has a brain that functions in that direction. And the third one we were going to do was going to be pop art, which is, you know, as y'all can tell, my favorite, Ooh, that sun's bright over there. And of course, I'm coming to you from my living room. And again, I wanna apologize that we're not meeting. We're just, we're all in a rough space right now. But maybe in a few months after the vaccines get out and the, the, the virus starts hitting that low point, maybe, maybe with some social distancing, we can pick up a meeting or two. I can't promise anything. I'm just crossing my fingers and praying and hoping right along with everyone else. So today, since it is December and we're all just kind of, we're just done with this year. We're, we're getting through the holidays and, and trying our best. I'm going to actually just talk to you today. And what we're going to talk about is Sam. Yes, the the jolly man that comes down your your chimney and and leaves toys. You know, for those who believe, my mom was always even even as we became adults, she was like, if you ever say, I don't believe in Santa Claus, you don't get a gift. So I was a a forty year old woman going, I still believe, mom. <laughs> Although the gifts usually turned to money at that point, and then it was it was more about the grandkids, and that's that's what Santa Claus is for. It's for the kids. So I'm going to give you a brief history about Santa Claus, and at the end of the video, I'm going to post several um, Coke ads because we'll we'll discuss how important the Coca Cola, Coca Cola Company was to inventing the Santa Claus that we know today. And it's it's amazing. And, uh, you know, there were pay, uh, newspapers and magazines that picked up this advertising, you know, Santa Claus for their products, I guess you could say, you know, just boosting sales for the season. But Saturday Evening Post, and the New Yorker were two, and still are, two of the most famous magazines to feature Santa Claus on their cover in the month of December. So I'm going to post several of those, and we're going to talk about Santa Claus. And, of course, advertising is a form of art. There are several famous artists out there who got their start in the magazine world doing ads and also next year once we start you know everything starts leveling out from the election and things i will discuss um and i'm sorry all this reflection is is kind of getting kind of getting out of hand let me see what i can do to kind of kind of divert that because it's hitting my floor yeah 
not a whole lot, but it helps. Um, so we'll discuss how cartoons affected um, politics. And you will be amazed at, you'll just be amazed. And we'll talk about it and we'll show some examples. And who knows, we might draw our own cartoon. But that'll be later next year. Hopefully when we're all together and we can all sit and, and have our own conversations and discuss what we might want to draw. So that, I hope that sounds good to you guys. So let's talk about Santa Claus. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine and myself and our daughters went to Atlanta, Georgia. And she was like, girl, you got to see the Coca-Cola Museum. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, it's it's Coca-Cola. Although it's my favorite, you know, soda to drink. I'm like, okay, whatever. If you get the chance and you're in Atlanta, go see the Coca-Cola <laughs> Museum. I promise you will not be disappointed. For me, of course, you guys know, I loved the artwork and it is full of art. I was so amazed. They have these huge Coke bottles that artists decorated for them, for the museum. And then also they had their own exhibit of all their Coca-Cola ads. And, and it, I looked at some of them and I'm like, I remember being a child and looking at that ad and thinking it is the coolest ad. So, yes, definitely, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, take the time, spend the money, go see the Coca-Cola Museum. You will not be disappointed. But that got that got me to thinking, okay, so, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're ready for the year to end. Let me do something that will be exciting and fun and here we are, Santa Claus. What's more fun than Santa Claus? So as we all know, Santa Claus, ha it's not necessarily a Christian like symbol. It it's a symbol of, of kindness because you know, he was a man that delivered toys to children and children who couldn't necessarily, weren't necessarily gonna get a gift at Christmas. There is the, the Krampus, which was this scary, I, I don't, I don't even know. I, I have some friends that are really into him and they know exactly what he was, but it was more of a, a elf and he, it, it, he wasn't a good, a good guy. Yeah. There was like bloodshed and stuff. So, so you have all these symbols of, of this St. Nicholas um, Krampus, you know, just, so Santa Claus just kind of morphed as we changed, as we weren't at, you know, we wanted more fluff, more warm and fuzzy feeling than moral, you know, like if you do this, then Krampus will come in and he'll take your toes, you know, kind of thing. You know, we, we eased up and so did Santa Claus. So, in 1920, or no, excuse me, 1823, the, and I got my little cheat, my cheat sheets. Maybe I can do that. Hey, and I can read it better because it's further away. Um, so, Clement Clark Moore and also Henry Iving, uh, no, excuse me, Henry Livingston Jr. They're both kind of credited to the, the Twas the Night Before Christmas poem, but it was actually, it was first published in 1823. So in that poem, you hear, you know, he was a right jolly old elf. So he's more jolly in that, but he also, they refer to him as an elf. So, you know, they're kind of teetering back and forth. Oh, everybody, this is Jesse. He's needing some love. So, they're, they're teetering back and forth. You know, he's jolly, but he's still an elf, okay? But you get the the cherry cheeks and the, the button nose and the, the belly that shook like a bowl full of jelly and all that. So, Coca-Cola kind of started thinking about that. In the 1920s, they started doing Christmas ads. So they thought, well, let's let's add Santa Claus into this. So Fred Meisen, 
or, or yeah, Fred Mizen. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name. He started the first ads for Coca-Cola. And so he started depic depicting Santa Claus more as a, um, a jolly person, somebody that you would want in your home. Oh yeah, hello Jessica. Yeah, you wanna say hi to your fans now? Yes, thank you. In 1931, the company began placing Coca-Cola ads in popular magazines. And so they wanted a more realistic and, and, and happy figure for Santa Claus. So they uh, commissioned an, a uh, Michigan-born illustrator of the name Hayden, and, and it's, it, it's miss, you know, I'm going to mispronounce it. Sud, uh, Sudblom. <laughs> and he started developing all of these different images of Santa Claus. And it's actually Santa Claus. It's not a man dressed up. Excuse me, I'm going to get him down because he's getting a little lovey. It wasn't just a man dressed up like Santa Claus. It was, they wanted Santa Claus to be his own man. Okay, so first it was inspired by the Twas the Night Before Christmas, and then they started going out into the world, and this, this illustrator actually knew this retired salesman, and he was like, he would make the best Santa Claus. So the first images of Santa Claus was, you know, off a real man. So Coca-Cola started this campaign, this Christmas campaign. You know, we're going to you know, we're going to make Santa Claus jolly. Uh, one of the ads is Santa actually playing with the toys and he stops to have a Coke. And the ad reads, my hat's off to the pause that refreshes. So Santa Claus is like, hey, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to have a Coke and I'm going to enjoy it and you should too. So Coca-Cola just really, and he, you know, when he first came out, he had like the, like the, the more Nordic look about him and he had the deer skin coat, which was tan and they ended up changing that to red. So there you go. The, the red coat, the, the red stockings, the red hats, it was, it was all developed originally by Coca-Cola and their illustrators for these Christmas ads. So, I mean, you like to think, oh, it was passed down from generation after generation. No, sweetie, it was Coca-Cola. They, they, they pretty much invented Santa Claus as he is today. Like that is the image that we, when we think about Santa Claus, that's who the majority of us get. Um, so, you know, he was based on the salesman, um, Santa Claus, let me see here. There was one, there was, you know, they talk about how, you know, he and his ads, he'd be reading the letters and he would be eating the cookies. Even at one point, the Sunblum, Sunblum, Google it. I Googled the pronunciation and it's still difficult for me. Um, he sat in front of a mirror and he sketched out his, like Santa Claus using his own image. Um, and see, one year he was wearing a wedding ring. Santa Claus appeared without a wedding ring, causing fans to write letters to what happened to Mrs. Claus. So there you see the art of advertising. People pay attention. And especially if it's good art, it's good paintings, good drawings, good illustrations, people are going to pay attention. And from one year to the next, they, they noticed Santa wasn't wearing a wedding ring and, they're, and and people were upset. You know, they were like, hey, you can't, you can't do this. Where, where is Mrs. Claus? So I did, I didn't know that either. So that's really cool. Uh, so Coca-Cola decided that Santa Claus needed a helper. So in 1942, they developed Sprite Boy. Now there was no soda by the name of Sprite at this time. Sprite, as we all know, is another word for like a nymph, a um, fairy, one of those type creatures. So he was 
uh, from the 1940s throughout the 1950s, he was, you know, Santa's little helper elf. It wasn't until the 1960s that Coca-Cola introduced Sprite. So they had already built up this, this image, this, you know, this, this, this character, here's Sprite Boy. Well, Coca-Cola's like, hmm, we need a new flavor. Here's this new flavor, what do we name it? Well, people are already in love with Sprite Boy. Let's name it Sprite. Coca-Cola is one of the best companies as far as knowing how to get to pe people to buy their products. And we'll excuse the whole new Coke. And for you younger people, y'all don't have an idea about new Coke, but you need to look it up. It was a sad, depressing time, probably even worse than 2020. Um, so they started doing TV commercials. The ad was created uh, actually by an uh, Academy Award winning uh, director. So they, they pull out all stops when it comes to their advertising. So the next time you see an image of Santa Claus, you see the Santa Claus in the mall, you can be like, Coca-Cola brought that image to me. And it, it makes you, cause you know, Santa Claus is Santa Claus. And, and, and I know my mom went to bed on Christmas Eve eager to see what Santa Claus brought the next morning. I know, you know, I grew up very poor and we didn't always get a lot or exactly what we wanted, but we still went to bed excited because Santa Claus and we would get up and the milk would be gone and the cookies would be gone and we just all excited. Our letters would be gone. And now as an adult, I look and I'm like, <laughs> go, 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 look. Although the St. Nicholas and it was here, but the Santa Claus that I've always known, that I've always imagined being in my living room as a child was actually developed by Coca-Cola. Sorry guys. I know 2020 just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? So as time has went on, other people have kind of jumped in on the whole Santa Claus thing. Uh, you'll see some pictures at the end, pop art and um, pinup art. Yeah, there's a couple of pinups in there and they're little sassy Santa Claus uh, dresses. You know, these artists are like, hey, let, you know, we've got the jolly old fat man over here. Let's put this, you know, kind of sexy, risque woman in a Santa Claus looking outfit and I mean, you to this day, you've got Christmas cards that are nothing but Christmas time pinups dressed in variations of Santa Claus outfits. Or you've got the pinup sitting on Santa Claus's lap. So they even got in on it, which is kind of cool, you know. Uh, the Saturday Evening Post, they would have their covers and they were all dedicated to Christmas and they had different logos like... There's one, a mom and dad are trying to get their kids to to take the perfect Christmas card photograph. And they're like, not having it. The little boy's pout and the little girl looks perfect. Little boy's pout and he's like, I'm not doing it. Parents trying to wrap gifts, you know, late at night. It, it's it's very interesting to go back and look at, at all of this. Let's see, I'm just kind of going through my notes. Like I said, you'll see all this at the end. And you can look at it for yourself and, you know, and after Christmas, kids not being able to play with their toys until their their piano lessons are done. So, like I said, it, this was kind of a weird, you know, art education program because, it, like I said, it was at the end of the year. We kind of already went through all the mainstream, you know, art techniques and and designs and artists and and without you guys in the classroom with me it's just kind of like you know I do enjoy doing this program but that one on like feeding off of each other and you guys asking me well what do you think about this and then I'm like well what do you think about this you know that that is the whole reason that I started the program I know like after high school many of us 
you know, you go straight into, you know, your marriage life and having children or you go straight to work or you even go to college or, or a trade school. And the last time that you learned anything about art was high school. And that was probably one semester just to take care of a credit. Now, some of y'all aren't like me. I was leaving other classes to go to the art room. <laughs> Mr. John Fleming, I know, and bless his heart. He was always wonderful to me, and he, he just indulged me so much. But I know he was like, gosh, don't, aren't you supposed to be in history? Aren't you supposed to be in Spanish? And I'm like, no, they don't care. And <laughs> But he just, he he was a wonderful art teacher. And those of you that had the pleasure of getting to know him and being taught by him, it, it was truly a blessing. He, he was a wonderful, wonderful educator and a wonderful artist. So when the library came up and they were like, we need programs, what are you guys thinking? And I was like, we need an art education. We need something that, because we have so many artists in Allen County, it is unbelievable. And, you know, we need a program, especially where the younger people can come in and we can talk about these, you know, these artists and, and their works and actually try to do our own recreations of them and, and have a good time. And it's totally free thinking, no judgment, no, because I'm, I'm one of those people that no matter what I'm trying to, to teach you, no, I'm not, we're just discussing. I don't like that word teach because I feel like more, you're teaching me just as much as I'm teaching you. But a lot of people are like, if I go in and I mess up, somebody's going to judge me and somebody's going to tell me I'm doing it wrong. I will never tell you you're doing anything when it comes to art wrong. I might see that you're trying to do something, but if maybe you'll turn it this way, you'll get, you'll get what you're trying to achieve. But I will never, ever, ever tell you you're doing something wrong because you're not. Honestly, in the world of art, you know, there are going to be people out there. They're going to be art teachers and professors and even artists they are going to like, oh, you're doing that wrong. Art is you. It comes from you. And even if you're trying to do a recreation of someone else's work, it's still you. Now, there, there are certain techniques that you need a certain brush, a certain paint, a certain way to apply it. But once you get a grasp on that, there's no wrong way. And it just always keep that in mind. People will come to my acrylic classes and they'll say, I can't even draw a stick. And I'm like, well, it's a good thing we are not, or, you know, like a stick figure. Good thing we're not painting a stick figure. It's all shapes and colors and, and it's you. So once this program gets started back up, I really, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing my, my usual peeps. And I, I hope that they're all still in situations that they can come back to the program. But I'm looking forward to seeing new guys and girls and, and people and just to come in and, and let's talk about art. Let's, <laughs> let's learn, how, you know, how to do something new, something different, you know. So... I promised you this would be a short program and I'm gonna to try to keep it under 25 minutes. But at the end of this program, just look, I'm gonna be posting several examples of what we were just talking about. Again, if you get to Atlanta, Georgia, do take the time to go to the Coca-Cola Museum. Wonderful, wonderful experience and the polar bears there. But the art, if you're, you know, if you, and it, there's a lot of pop art, they did a whole pop art, you know, campaign at one time too. So go look at that. If you're in a new city or a new town, you see they have like a local art museum, uh, gallery exhibit, go, go see it. And, and I know sometimes people's artwork can be fairly expensive, but if you see a little piece and you're thinking, I really love that and it's not that expensive or it's within what you want to spend, buy it, buy it. And that artist will think one day, 
you know, I did this really cool painting on this tile of a, a sunflower and this girl from Kentucky bought it and wow, you know, that art is, you know, halfway across the United States. So support your local artist and your artist abroad and just think everything is art if you look at it in in the right light <laughs> and even if it's not your style of art something that you're into you know don't don't yuck somebody else's passion you know try to look at it there in their way and and i promise you you'll see the beauty of it so this is Miss Mariah. I'm signing off for Art Ed for 2020. So I'll see you guys in January 2021. Don't know what the program's going to look like then. I'm, I'm still developing. I'm still coming up with ideas. So we'll uh, hopefully kick off 2021 with a bang. See you guys. Bye.